My name is Noah. Despite my perception of myself as a climber, I'm insecure of the fact that I've never really accomplished any big climbing goals. I have yet to do something that stands out as a single great accomplishment that I'll be forever proud of. I'm 23 years old, I'm at the perfect nexus of the development of my physical fitness and the underdevelopment of my frontal cortex, and I'm itching to do something big. And not just slightly big. I've been researching a route called Time Wave Zero that will be more than triple the height of anything I've done before and by far a harder difficulty grade. The very thought of it has been making my palms sweat for weeks. The scale and grandeur is almost unthinkable, but climbing it would represent this major shift in my mind of what I'm capable of. I don't think I've ever felt this much fear, but at the same time I'm so excited to just go and have an adventure because I know that no matter what, it will be an adventure. It is a great day to hopefully be leaving Colorado. Yeah, I'm excited for the warm weather. Time wave zero, here we come. I've put together my dream team of five other climbers who will be joining me on this trip. College friends Aiden and Rue. My brother Raleigh, his girlfriend Mel. Bienvenidos a Monterrey, pronto llegar el momento and my high school friend and longtime creative and business partner, Jaden. We're very excited to see you guys. We're very excited to have some friends. <laughs> After a long day, we reunited, hopped in a cab, and arrived very late to the casita we'd be staying in. Under the moonlight, we could just barely make out the silhouette of the massive wall that towered above us. And I went to bed that night, unsure of whether I was ready for this, whether I'd gotten ourselves way over our heads. It's hard to describe the power that I felt getting this first real glimpse of El Toro the next morning. A combination of being awestruck by the beauty and absolutely terrified at the same exact time. El Toro and the surrounding mountains here in northern Mexico form an enclosure, with this riverbed as the only flatway in and out. This ring of mountains is the perfect natural fencing and is what gave this world-famous climbing area the name El Potrero Chico, or the Little Corral. Now let me show you the part that fills me with terror. Time Wave Zero is this 2,300-foot route on the backside of El Toro. Here is the approximate size of the Empire State Building for comparison. And just before the summit, right here, is the very hardest section on the entire route, meaning that all of the other climbing will come before it, making for an exciting climax that might shut us down 100 feet from the summit. So we're seeing pretty clearly the route. Jaden and I will attempt to climb Time Wave Zero in a single day. We're gonna need to train hard in the week leading up to this attempt, and especially Jaden. While I've been living in Colorado and climbing outside pretty much every chance I get, Jaden has been living in Savannah, Georgia. Let's just say there aren't a lot of mountains in Savannah. But it was Jaden who I started climbing with. We've been business partners for years, and we have a good dynamic. I don't know anyone else who has a more calm and confident mind, and I think he's going to make a great partner for this climb. Go 
The first mission was to just get used to the rock and climb some hard routes low to the ground. Anytime I go to a new climbing area, I always feel nervous that somehow I've entirely forgotten how to climb, but all it takes is a little warming up to get back into the swing of things. Something happened with my finger on the climb, man. My thumb is just. No, no, no. I can't believe I'm falling yet. <laughs> The limestone climbing here in El Potrero Chico is challenging, but so much fun, and we were all starting to feel a bit more Ooh. confident. That felt really good. Oh, rock, 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 rock. Sorry about that. An amazing first day. It's the full horizon route is time wave. And you can't, like right now, we have no clue how tall it is. But it's tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next mission was to hone our multi-pitch skills. Time Wave Zero is 23 official pitches, so not only will it be a lot of physical climbing, but it will be an insane amount of rope management and logistics. Practicing clove hitches, very essential knot for multi-pitching. Oh, you just climbed. Where am I? Tie the knot. Where am I? Oh my god, dude. I need the clip, I need the clip. Clip it in, bro, clip it in. Ah! Yeah, Mel, first multi-pitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's mariachi trumpet. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's just a one little blast down there. A couple pitches up, you start to really feel the exposure of where you are. Not only was this good training for our rope systems, but it also allowed us to get in the headspace of leading high above the ground. Oh yes, Mel. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> Mexico, we were learning, is this place of extremes. For example, there are only two types of police presence here. Either the super chill homies riding in the tiny old Toyota. Get ready for it. <laughs> or the assault rifle bearing guy riding Mad Max style in the back of a pickup truck. There is no in-between. And certainly the climbing here in Mexico also existed on those extremes. Some of the tallest, hardest, and craziest climbing any of us had done, yet at the base were resort-style swimming pools and there was exceptional cell reception. So good that Jaden even FaceTimed his family at the top of a six-pitch route called Excalibur. Check it out. Also, I just want to show you guys Rue's dedication as a cameraman, who, same facial expression and all, did three separate takes of this selfie top-out video. If you're wondering at any point in this video, wow, that's amazing that they got that shot, you can probably thank this man. Climbing in Mexico, man. So far, all of this multi-pitch climbing, even as such a big group, had been going relatively smoothly. And we were feeling real confident. Perhaps too confident. 
We decided that to finalize our multi-pitch training, we would climb these two iconic spires, Las Agujas. Splitting up into two groups, the idea was for both to top out at sunset. It was a nice idea, but things didn't really turn out that way. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! As the sun set, I think the change in temperature started to cause wind to just rip through the valley, and this made communication pretty difficult. I definitely should not be flying in this right now. And as usual, the climbing was taking longer than expected. So the sun set, and we were starting to lose light, well before either group was near the top. And there was this moment when Aiden and I were simultaneously leap climbing. I reached my anchor station, tied myself in, and yelled down, off belay, to Jaden, who was on my team and belaying me. But Raleigh, who was on the other team and belaying Aiden, and in simple terms, solely responsible for keeping him safe, heard me and confused me for Aiden. Off belay? No way. Aiden heard this while he was in the middle of a sketchy section of loose rock, realized the confusion, and started frantically yelling down, I think that he is at the anchor. No, wait. No, that's the wrong person. He said, don't take me off. You are safe! That freaked him the fuck out. Now, luckily, Raleigh never actually took Aiden off belay, but Aiden, who could barely hear, now thought he was untethered to the wall. So he did some smart thinking and used a belay device to secure himself and lower back down to where he could actually communicate with Raleigh. This whole situation really sketched them out, and they decided it would be best to bail. We just want to get off and be safe. Meanwhile, Jaden set off leading the last pitch in the dark. And despite the powerful wind trying to knock him off the rock and only being able to see the tiny hand and footholds with the light from his headlamp, he unlocks the classic fearless mindset that I know him for and makes it to the top. During this, Rue is filming us with the drone. And one moment, a really strong gust of wind comes in and just completely sweeps the drone away and slams it into a cliff. Thankfully, there was no one there but you may be able to faintly see a flashing red light. That is my drone. And knowing the battery will only last so long, he sets off on his own quest to go and retrieve it. Um, I can't believe Rue just ditched us. So many things went wrong, man. <laughs> Bro, you know what makes you really scared? What? Can you feel this? Oh my. <laughs> Yo, let's get down, man. This spire climbing adventure had thrown some unexpected challenges at us. But despite that, everyone made really rational and smart decisions to stay as safe as possible. And Jaden, despite the conditions, had absolutely crushed his lead climbs. And it was in this moment, at the top of the spire, looking up to our right, making out the faint horizon line of the time wave zero route above us, that I knew we were ready. It feels kind of scary, but also like the coolest feeling to just descend into the abyss. You said off belay, but it was echoing that he thought it was me. And I was like, I thought of every call that made sense to be like, do not take me off belay. <laughs> I can't lie, I was fucking terrified. But I thought he was gonna take me off. All of this climbing had been taking its toll on our bodies. And that night we compared injuries. Raleigh, that's gnarly. Props for that. My fingers are just so tired all day. I'm just like, Oh, drone. You got, you're getting gamer's thumb. <laughs> Jaden had a finger that was of particular concern because it looked and felt infected, which could compromise his ability to climb. We decided to perform some emergency first aid, and although I will say we didn't really know what we were doing, we did our best, hoping that it would get better the next day. <laughs> Dude, it's been breathing for days. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you.
All right, let's check back in with Jaden's finger and oh my. Ooh, I think Rue was right. <laughs> As he let the zombie Frankenstein finger air out, we all decided that today, the day before our big Time Wave Zero attempt, we would all take a rest day. Go into town, get some supplies, and just generally take it easy. Here we are in El Podrero, Chico. Walking down this road, oh so long. We got Jaden on the drum, Noah on the camera, and Rue just singing this song. Woo! Gracias, gracias. Right now my mouth is on fire. I can smell it. It's stinging my nostrils. Yeah, it's stinging my nostrils. Up until this point, we had been going non-stop. Climbing, training, and planning so much that we had almost forgotten to just stop and appreciate where we were in the moment. So, Jaden, we've been working together for six years. We're about to set off on this 20 hour plus quest together. Do you think we're gonna like each other more or hate each other more by the end? I think it could go either way. <laughs> we'll just have to find out. Just so we don't have to like do that at all in the morning. These are extras? Yeah, those are extras that will go in the bags. We're bringing Lots of snacks, some chalk. extra chalk, a camera, six liters of water, and we cannot forget a Band-Aid. Hey dude, we gotta turn the lights off. Are you sleeping in your chair? <laughs> no, I'm just filming the turning the lights off for it. Good night dude, see you in the morning. Good night. <laughs> All right, dude. This one's genuine though. I'm really, I'm really excited. <laughs> this is awesome. All right, dude. Let's climb smart. This bolt. Yeah. Put to the left. Yeah. Looks like big, big pockets. We're committed, dude. We can't go back down now. Doesn't stand a chance. This is our point of no return. <laughs> which is the second hardest pitch on the route. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go for it, Jaden. Uh. Nice. <laughs> the 
hard pitch pitch two went pretty easy went first try which i feel pretty good about i feel like we're making great progress learned a lot in the moonlight headlamps off that was really awesome the day is just starting to break we're making good time yeah, especially because noah flashed the second pitch that was awesome <laughs> oh yeah lights are really starting to come out we might not even have lamps from here on out, really. Going all the way up there. Nice day, Dan. The sun has hit us on the wall. Just made it to the top of pitch 12, which officially marks the half, more than halfway point. I think we're gonna do this. We made amazing time for the first 12 pitches, reaching this halfway milestone in about five hours. Check out this amazingly comfy ledge behind us. Since we were doing pretty well on time, we decided to rest for a moment, take our shoes off and rehydrate. And I'll let the story play out for you but it was here on this ledge that things started to fall apart. How you doing? Dude, I think I kinda gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just look for the bag. <laughs> okay, but we're gonna leave it here. So we get on the way back? Mm-hmm. Please do it like 10 feet that way. <laughs> Don't look. <laughs> I feel like the integrity of the tortilla bag is like really not great. <laughs> Well, dude, is it like a big bag of soup or like just like a sausage in there? <laughs> oh, dude, I don't want to look at it. You feel better? Yeah. After that little slowdown, we looked up at the massive head wall still above us. I had no idea how I would be feeling when we reached the hardest pitch way up there, but I knew there was a good chance it would shut us down. We'd be climbing everything from here on out in the sunshine. Something interesting was happening in our dynamic while climbing these upper pitches. We were alternating roles as either the pessimist or the optimist. You think we're gonna make it to the top? Yeah, we're definitely gonna make it to the top. One moment I would be the one trying to motivate after a hard section, and the next moment, Jaden would be the one trying to lift spirits after we had looked down for a little too long and realized how high up we were. It's like, whoa, we're pretty high up. This is definitely the highest up I've ever been. Yeah, I don't know. It's like in my mind and in my body. Dude, and we got two hard pitches ahead of us and it's really intimidating. In this sense, for both of us, it was truly the other person, this special partnership uh. dynamic that kept us moving upwards. Uh. One hard pitch to go. Nice. I'm about to start the 512 pitch. I'm getting angry. I want to be on top of it. Climb. I'm just tired of like going up. I want to go down. I don't play video games, but the culture and terminology is pretty fun. And I especially love the term of a boss battle, sort of the final climax challenge to overcome or opponent to defeat. For me, this next pitch, the hardest pitch on all of Time Wave Zero, was my final boss battle. In the end, I did have to pull on some bolts to get through the very hardest 10-foot section. But even after doing as much cheating as I could, the bolts became more spaced out, and I actually had to climb some hard 5.11 moves. 
All day I had been so worried and stressed over whether this pitch would shut us down. But in this moment, when I made it to the anchors, I knew we had done it. And I knew that we would make it to the top. Yeah, dude. Jaden ascended up after me, and I could tell he was starting to lose energy. I accidentally flipped my GoPro into a weird setting where it only films this backwards angle, but in the audio you can hear his pretty intense panting. We were motivated to keep going, so Jaden quickly set off, leading the last pitch, which for the grade was hard and really sketchy, meaning that there weren't many bolts, and Jaden risked some pretty big and ugly falls. I think for Jaden, this was his final boss battle. And like me, he had to dig deep and give everything he had. Yeah, you got this, come on. At the top, I pulled out my camera to start recording. And I've never seen Jaden look worse than he does in this next shot. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want you to pass out, are you good? You want blood sugar? Peanut butter? This is like kind of like a important situation. If you think you need something, man, get it. But after eating a few spoonfuls of peanut butter, he felt better, and we started to fully appreciate just where we were. Ooh. Top of time wave zero! Noah and Jaden are somewhere up there right now. Pretty amazing though, I'm really proud of those guys. It had taken us 14 hours to climb, but we still had to descend. A tedious, constant repetition of rappelling down one by one, then pulling the rope to the anchors, just hoping and praying that it wouldn't snag or get stuck. <laughs> As we neared the ground, I could feel this immense wave of relief starting to wash over me. Not only had we made it up safely, but we had made it down safely too and I could finally relax and truly appreciate the monumental nature of what we had just accomplished. All in all, we had spent 18 hours on the wall, starting at 3.30 in the morning and getting back down at 9.30 p.m. Dude, we made it. Yeah, <laughs> we made it. Fuck oh, yes, God, dude. dude. Oh, get it off. Oh, oh yeah. Feet, you are loved again. Oh. That is from 20 pitches of rappelling that we just did. Right now. I'm about ready to walk back home. Yeah, let's get it going. <laughs> and after Jaden took care of some business, we put away the cameras and headed back home, ate some leftovers that our friends had saved for us, and went to bed for one of those deep, dreamless nights of sleep. We took it really easy for the last two days of our trip, just hanging out in the canyon and cheering our friends on as they climbed this classic route called Estrellita. Yeah, Raleigh! I just found the perfect pillow. Oh, yeah. I wrote a song about Noah and Jaden doing Time Wave Zero. Here we go. Climbing up tall mounds of rock Training hard for time wave zero Heard climbing Day in and day out in the sun and the fog are they tough enough to get to the top? 
Are they tough enough to finish it off? Are they tough enough? Are they tough enough? Here we are in El Potrero Chico Racking up and putting on a show. So let's see what the day will bring. Are they Something I'm trying to be better about is giving myself time to process and reflect after going on big adventures like this one. For me, this is my biggest climbing accomplishment so far, and it is something that I'll be forever proud of. For Jaden, a guy who literally hadn't climbed for six months, then came to Mexico and proceeded to go for one of the biggest, most classic sport climbs ever, one that pushed him as close to the limit as I think you can get, is a major accomplishment. And for us, the two tall, lanky guys who have been collaborating and working together for over six years, and who started climbing together, it was really special to share this moment. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Alrighty, thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. And thank you so much to Extra Tough for partnering with us to make this expedition happen. We've actually worn Extra Tufts on a couple expeditions before this one. We absolutely love them. They're a brand that stands for exploring rugged places, for getting outside your comfort zone, and for pushing your limits. So when they reached out to us to make this project happen, we couldn't have been more excited. Thanks, Thanks Extra Tough. Tough. And I want to extend a huge thank you to you guys, my audience, for getting me to 200,000 subscribers. It really means a lot that you guys are here along for the ride, and I hope you have a good one. It's just about two o'clock in the morning, and listen to this amazing Mexican karaoke. <laughs>